Bibles this morning and turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 5. We always look at a lot of Scripture. We're going to look at a, a lot of Scripture this morning. So I want to encourage you, if you'd like, you can uh, turn through the Bible with me or you can listen and go back later and listen to these on YouTube and hear these Scriptures again. Uh, I, I don't know that I, I, I don't have a title for this message. You can title it what you like. Um, this, this topic is a topic, honestly, I'd rather not preach on. Let me say it this way. I'd rather not have to preach on this topic. Uh, but I'm full well willing to preach what God has laid on my heart this morning. Uh, it, this topic is just, it's a, it's a sign of our society that I need to preach this topic. Um, and I, here's what I would ask. Uh, I know there's some younger people in this room today. I'm asking you to hear out what God has to say. Uh, I know what our culture says. We are inundated with what our culture says. And our culture is wrong. Um, what you've been taught in school, if you go to a public school, what you've been taught in school about this subject is wrong. It is absolutely false. And I want you to know the truth. And uh, I, I believe that every family in this room, to some degree or another, maybe, maybe through friends or maybe within your own family, uh, you're dealing with something along these lines this morning. And uh, so I want to look directly at what God's Word has to say. And, and we just need to decide right off the bat, are we going to believe God's Word or are we going to believe the TV? Are we going to believe God's word? Or are we going to believe our culture? Uh, are we going to believe God's word? Or are we going to believe what the public school system has to say? By the way, are we going to believe God's word? Or are we going to believe what some of these liberal churches now, so-called, they're not churches, uh, they're social clubs, but are we going to believe what they have to say? Ephesians, or not Ephesians, I'm in Isaiah, I hope you are too. Isaiah, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Isaiah chapter 5, Notice verse number 18. There's a word that we're going to see several times in this passage that we may not use as much today, but what it means is this. There is a serious warning, a serious warning from God that you better pay attention to. And that's the word woe, W-O-E. If you told somebody you better watch out, you better pay attention, you're in trouble with God, well, that's what woe means. Isaiah 5, 18, it says, Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin, as it were, with a cart rope. What he's talking about is like somebody who would be dragging a cart with a rope, almost like a wagon. There's a handle on the wagon. You're, you're, you're taking it along with you. Sometimes you see kids, they'll, they'll drag a wagon. They have their possessions in it. He said, I want to tell you, woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity. You're, you're not ashamed of it. You don't care who sees it. In fact, you might even be proud of it. Woe unto you. Verse 19, that say, Let him, speaking of God, make speed and hasten his work that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it. Hey, if God's really going to judge sin, come on, big boy. Come on, God. Show us what you're made of. That's what they're saying. Oh, God, we're, we're proud of our sin. You're going to judge our sin? Well, you haven't yet. Come on, God. Verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, woe unto them. Be warned. God is not ignoring this. Uh, I, I want to read this briefly. Th this is exactly what's going on in our culture. People are calling evil good and good evil. I, I want us to understand some helpful distinctions today. Number one, men are not women. Number two, women are not men. 
Number three, pets are not kids. Some of you spend more on dog food, but you don't feed your kids right. Say, who am I? I don't know. You Don't raise your hand. Your, your, your pets are not kids. Children are made in the image of God. Dogs are dogs. Cats are cats. I'm not saying don't like your dog or your cat, but they're not your kids. I think I need to park there just a little longer. Some people take better care of their dogs than they do their kids. They're more concerned with how their dog's doing than their kid's spiritual well-being. Number four, boyfriends and girlfriends and your live-in are not spouses. Say, but in our culture, we just try one another out for a while. Yeah, that's our corrupt, wicked, perverse culture. But God's Word says, if you want to live together as if you're married, then get married. Boyfriends and girlfriends are not spouses. But we've lived together for years. You're not spouses. You're not husband and wife. Number five, the internet is not the local church. I'm glad for our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm glad that we had that as a tool when folks couldn't be here. But folks, we are commanded not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. There's a reason for that. Many reasons. Number six, words are not guns. Number seven, feelings are not facts. Number eight, creatures are not the creator. Number nine, sin is not righteous. Number ten, right is not wrong. So, child of God, don't feel ashamed when you stand up for that which is right. Verse 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. I think I need to park there for a minute too. Well, Pastor, we, we just drink in moderation. So you're just a twelfth drunk or an eighth drunk or a sixth drunk. Hello. I will not be brought under the power of any, Paul said. Which justify the wicked for reward. Well, hey, if... If you pay me enough, I'll say whatever you want me to behind this pulpit. No, I won't. I'll say what God wants me to say. Whether I get paid or not, I'm glad to get paid. But guess what? I did this before I got paid. And I'll do it again. God's truth is not for sale. Say, so, Pastor, I just won't give. Oh, take that up with God. This is His truth. He's not going to change it for you or anybody. which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust. Don't miss it. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts. I don't want to hear. Pastor, don't tell me what the Bible says. Tell me what I want to hear. And despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against His people. And He hath stretched forth His hand against them and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this His anger is not turned away, but His hand is stretched out still. Lord, speak to our hearts, I pray. Lord, I know that I'm going to preach your truth and I'm just asking you, Lord, that every heart will be open and attentive and listen to your word and receive your truth and refuse the lies that our culture is telling. May we embrace your truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, that in the last days perilous, dangerous times shall come. Why? Because among other things, people will be proud. This is Pride Month, you know. They'll be without natural affection. Men marrying men. Women marrying women. Say, Pastor, why do we have to deal with this? Because it's forced down our throats. And our, you don't understand. If you don't understand this, you need to understand this. Our kids are being force-fed this at school. In the public school.
The Bible says that in those last days, men will be despisers of those that are good. And they'll be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I could read dozens of examples. I'm just going to read a few this morning. The bottom line is this. All of this boils down to the wickedness of man's heart. It boils down to perversion, the sin that is in man's heart. Last year, when I preached a similar topic, I brought up PBS. Parents, PBS that had a, 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 an animated cartoon, uh, Arthur. And it had a man and a man getting married. Children, that's a perversion. It's an abomination before God. Say, but I have a family member who is. It's still an abomination before God. And again, I don't want to depress us with dozens of examples, but I'm going to read a few. In California, a judge ruled that a thruple, not a couple, but three homosexual men are to be listed on the birth certificates of two children. Do you understand there's no end to this? The city council of Cambridge, Massachusetts became the second in the state to legally recognize polyamory with a domestic partnership ordinance. In case you're wondering, polyamory is when a person has simultaneous romantic relationships with multiple partners and polygamy is when multiple people are legally married to each other. No doubt America is trending backward to pagan sexuality. I'll give you example after example. I praise God there's a gym teacher in a public school, Loudoun County, Virginia, he was placed on leave days after he spoke out against a proposed school policy that says educators should refer to students by the pronouns that align with their gender identity. Byron Tanner Cross, a physical education specialist at Leesburg Elementary School, said at a May 25th school board meeting that followed the proposed policy, following the proposed policy would go against his religious beliefs. I love all of my students. By the way, I love you, and I'm going to tell you the truth this morning. Those who are lying to you do not love you. They're trying to use and abuse your life. I love all of my students, but I will never lie to them regardless of the consequences. That's because he loves them. He said, according to a recording of the meeting, I'm a teacher, but I serve God first, and I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl, and vice versa, because it is against my religion. Well, it's against truth. It's lying to my child. It's abuse to a child. Yes, it is. It's abusing children to tell them a boy, really, maybe you should have been a girl. Or a girl, maybe you really should have been a boy. And it's sin against our God. Thank you, sir. You're right. Cross told the school board members that he was speaking out of love for those who are suffering with that mentality. Two days after the meeting, Cross was informed via a letter from the school that he was on paid administrative leave. The letter, which was shared publicly by Cross's attorney, says that the teacher is being investigated for allegations that you engaged in conduct that has had a disruptive impact on the operations of Leesburg Elementary School. Public schools, as his attorney said, and this is right, have no business compelling teachers to express ideological beliefs that they don't hold, but it's beyond the pale to suspend someone simply for respectfully providing their opinion at a public meeting. And rightfully, they acknowledge this isn't just about a pronoun. This is about endorsing an ideology. See, they're not happy if you just use the pronoun, which you should never do. They, they're not happy until you swallow it whole and embrace it as normal. And it's not normal. It's a perversion from God, a perversion before God. They want to, us to endorse their perversion. Thankfully, they sued. And thankfully, the court got it right. Cross immediately filed a lawsuit against the school board. Today, the Virginia 20th Judicial Circuit Court, you see, there are still some people with common sense and decency. There are. Quit hiding in a corner, Christian. Quit hiding in a corner, hiding the truth because you're scared because of our culture. You don't need to be scared. You have the truth. You stand up. You're right. If you're standing on God's word, you're right. The culture's wrong. Don't be ashamed of that. Don't be ashamed. The court said upholding constitutional rights serves the public interest. You know, it just might need, be, it might be that we need some people to fight these battles. 
Thankfully, they reinstated him because he sued and won. Uh, these are just a few examples. How many of you ever heard of Nickelodeon? I used to watch Nickelodeon as a kid. Double Dare. I think it was called Double Dare. You'd run through this obstacle course, get covered in slimes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Great TV. I mean, great. Good for your mind. Not really. You'd be disgusted if you see the picture I'm looking at of a drag queen. Children's TV network Nickelodeon. Hey, parents, look, look, wake up. Wake up. Say, Pastor, I just I don't want to bother anybody. Let them have their preferences. Wake up. It's affecting your children. I had a boss at work one time. I, I, who, who was of that wicked, abominable persuasion? I took a stand and the boss above her said, why does it matter to you? I mean, shouldn't you just let people live and let live, let them do what they want to do? I said, I'll tell you why it matters to me. A couple of reasons. Number one, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, and I'm going to tell the truth. And in certain countries, telling the truth on this subject will get you thrown in jail. And guess what? I'd rather not go to jail, but I'm still going to tell the truth. Number two, I have children, and I do not want my children thinking that this is normal, that this is acceptable, it's okay. Can I tell you something? Parents, you're pussyfooting around this thing, you're playing with it, and I'm going to tell you, the young kids coming up are watching, and they're looking, and they're saying, well, it's not that big a deal, mom and dad don't think it is. There's a generation watching. You need to make a big, bold line between right and wrong. You need to make a big, bold line between righteousness and unrighteousness, between good and evil. You need to take a stand. Quit hiding in the corner. You know, it might cost you something to take a stand, and it'll be worth the cost. Children's TV network Nickelodeon's pulling out all the pro-LGBTQIA, what, however many letters. You know, there's going to be more letters added. You know why? Because there's no end to the perversion. They pulled it all out for Pride Month. The latest example is a video for kids that normalizes queer and trans people, and it's performed by this perverted drag queen, whose real name is Andrew Levitt, and who identifies as gay and uses he, him, his pronouns. Shows a picture of this pervert saluting the pride flag with pink hair and long eyelashes and lipstick and a filthy dress. Pervert. In the lyrics, Wes describes what each color in the pride flag means. It's pretty innocuous stuff until he gets to baby blue, pink, and white. It represents transgender because every letter is equal. That's on Nickelodeon. And, you know, I could read example after example after example. Folks, what I'm saying is this. This is the last place. The church of God, the church that stands for truth, the Bible, this is the last place standing for what's right. The culture is going to hell. The school doesn't stand for right. Athletics don't stand for right. Our government largely doesn't stand for right. I'm saying if there's going to be truth for to, to told to the, our, our, our world, if there's going to be a light in the darkness, it has to be from the people in this room. God's word is very clear on this. It's not ambiguous at all. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 21, it says, The Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. God made men, God made women. God created men to be attracted to women and He created women to be attracted to men. Naturally. Naturally. 
say, but that's the Old Testament. Well, it's Bible anyway. But it's all over the New Testament too. Matthew 19, Jesus reaffirms what Genesis says. And in Matthew 19, verse 4, He answered and said unto them, Jesus said, Have ye not read that He which made them at the beginning made them male and female? How many genders is that? That's two. Is Jesus right or is PBS right? Is Jesus right or is your public school filthy book right? Jesus is right. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. In Leviticus 18.22, God's word is very clear. It says, for a man to lie with a man is an abomination to God. It's an abomination, still an abomination. I've got so many papers up here, I need to find my other papers. Leviticus 20.13 says that that perversion is punishable by death in God's law. Did you hear me? Say, Pastor, why are you picking on this sin in particular? Aren't all sins bad? Yes, they are. Pastor, are you saying you're not a sinner? Oh, no, no, I'm not saying that. But listen, listen to me. If there's a pride month... Listen to me, if there's a pride month for drunkenness, I'm going to preach all over it. I'm proud to be a drunkard. Hey, if there's a pride month for drug addiction, I'm going to preach all over it. Why? Because your pride flies in the face of God. I'm proud I'm a drug addict. I'm proud I'm a drug pusher. Hey, if there's an adultery pride month, I'm going to preach all over it. I'm proud I'm an adulterer. Proud. I'm going to march up and down the street and promote adultery. Hey, if there's a fornication, that's what this whole month's about. Being proud of fornication. You know what that is? It's just all kinds of perverted sin. That's what it is. It's anything outside of God's plan. And what is God's plan? One man, one woman for a lifetime. That's God's plan. I'll say that again. One man, one woman for a lifetime. Now look, you may not like what I'm saying, but you're going to have no doubt what God's Word says when you leave here this morning. I'm not going to play around with this. Say, hey, you know what? Oh, maybe the TV's a little bit right. No, no, they're totally wrong. God's Word has it right. Hebrews 13, 4, marriage between a man and a woman, as Jesus defined it, is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. God's Word is very clear on this. Look at Romans 1, please. This is in the New Testament, by the way. The New Testament. Romans 1, verse 18. The Bible says, For the wrath of God... What's wrath? God's fierce anger. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them. You will not be able to leave here today and say, I didn't know. No, you're going to know. You're going to know the truth. Look at verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And 
even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. That's in the New Testament. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. God's word is very clear. God is holy. He hates the abomination that's being paraded up and down our streets. He hates this filthiness that's being paraded Pride Month. He hates it. Oh, well, God, no, he hates it. It's an abomination to him. Number one, God's word is clear. Number two, I want you to see man's wickedness. Now, these verses are somewhere in this pile, but I think maybe God just wants us to turn to them. Look at Genesis 6, please. This might take a little longer for us to turn to all of them. Maybe that's what we need to do. Genesis 6, verse 5. Uh, where, where does this wickedness stem from? Well, there are my verses, but I still want to turn to some of these. Genesis 6, 5. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Look at Genesis chapter 8, verse 21. It says, look at the end of the verse, it says, The imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Where, where does this perversion come from? It comes from man's heart. Are you hearing me? It comes from man's heart. Uh, look at Mark 7, verse 20. Mark chapter 7, verse 20. Say, Pastor, people are born that way. Here's where I'll agree with you. Now, naturally, men are born attracted to women, and naturally, women are born attracted to men. But I'll agree with you that the heart of man, mine included, and every heart in this room is corrupt. So you are right if you say, Pastor, but I was born with some sinful tendencies. Exactly. Exactly. So let me ask you, if you have a family member who's a drug addict, will you make excuses and just say, well, they were born with that sinful tendency? Well, you know, they, they do like adultery. They were just born with that sinful tendency. Well, they are a thief and they steal from everybody around them, but they were born with that natural tendency. We wouldn't celebrate those perverse tendencies. We wouldn't say they're normal. Are we going to have a pride month for thieves and robbers? A bunch of thieves and robbers who break into your house, steal your stuff. Should they have a pride month? No, because it's an abominable perversion. Where does that stem from? Man's heart. Mark 7, verse 20, Jesus said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things, pride's in there, come from within and defile the man. So do we say we're going to have a pride month? We're going, to, we're going to have a pride month for fornicators living together. Say, Pastor, I don't like this. Then you don't like the Bible. You may have thought you liked the Bible. What you really like is religion. And I'm not offering that. I'm offering the truth of this book, of God's Word. Say, Pastor, can't you say it a little more nice? No, because I won't have your attention then. You'll think it's okay. You, 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 you'll just, oh, it's another sermon. What's Arby serving for lunch? No, I want your attention. This is an abomination.
James 1, 14 and 15. Say, well, it's our culture. That's the problem. No, I'm going to tell you where the problem starts. In your heart and mine. James 1, 14, every man is tempted. You fill in the blank, whatever sin you want to put in there. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. There's a lot of enticing going around in our culture. But where does the problem start? Right there. Every man's drawn away of his own lust. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God's word is holy, but man's heart is wicked. Number three, we must see this. God's judgment against wicked perversion. God's judgment against wicked perversion. Notice with me, let's turn here, look at Genesis chapter 19. Genesis 19, look at verse 24. Say, how are you going to win these people? You preach this hard against the pastor. You know what I'm more concerned with? I'm more concerned with the generation coming next. Hey, I hope, I hope some of you, will, if, if you're accepting of this lifestyle, you'll wake up. But I'm more concerned with that generation coming next because you're not hearing the truth anywhere else. Genesis 19, 24. By the way, in case you want to read this later, what happened is there were a bunch of homosexual perverts that showed up that wanted to violate these angels. And Lot was so messed up in his own mind, he said, no, don't harm my guests. Here, take my daughters. That's how messed up his mind was. By the way, you know, this is a new thing. We're proud. Hey, this isn't anything new. It's just sinful perversion. It's been around since man was created. Don't think you're in some new movement. You're not. Wickedness has always been here. After the fall. Genesis 19, 24, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah. There's a reason we call it sodomy and sodomite. So I, I prefer queer or homosexual. I prefer sodomite because it's a Bible term. It reminds us there's a judgment of God upon this wickedness. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord. Make no mistake, it's God's judgment. Out of heaven... And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which drew upon the ground. Look at verse 27. Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord and he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. Say, but pastor, that's Old Testament. It's still Bible. And lest we think that God doesn't still feel the same way. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 6. Lest we're deceived into thinking God just winks at this now. 2 Peter 2, verse 6. The Bible says, And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow. Say, that's not my God. Then you don't serve the God of the Bible. You, you've got some make-believe God that you've made up in your own mind. You've got some God that is not the God of the Bible because, yes, God is a God of love, but He's a God of holiness. He's a God of righteousness, a God of wrath who will not put up with sin. He will not. That's why Jesus had to come and pay the price because God will not tolerate sin. He won't tolerate sin God, you should be more tolerant. He won't be. Uh, you know, what, what is it in humans that think we can tell God what to do? The one who created us? Well, God, this is what we've decided. This is what our nation voted on. God says, you think I care? I've already told you my will turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow. Don't miss it. Making 
them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. Does that apply to our nation today? It sure does. Look at Jude. Right before Revelation, Jude, look at verse 7. This is New Testament, by the way. I said, Pastor, why do you keep saying that? You know how many times I've people tell me, yeah, but Pastor, that's just in the Old Testament. Well, first of all, the Old Testament's Bible. And it's true. But even if it's not, if, if it was just Old Testament, it's still true. But the New Testament just reconfirms everything in the Old Testament. Jude, verse 7, even at Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. You know what that means? It means there was no end to their perversion. They would just find whatever hedonistic, perverted thing they could do. And that's exactly what's being celebrated in our country. That's exactly what's being celebrated this month with Pride Month. Giving themselves over to fornication. And going after strange flesh, flesh are set forth for, and what's the next word? Example. God says, hey, you want to know what I think about it? Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. You want to know what I think about it? Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. God's word is holy. Man's heart is wicked. God's judgment against wicked perversion is severe. Number four, I want you to see man's pride against God. Look at Ezekiel, please, chapter 16. Why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? I've heard people use this verse and twist it way out of context. And go, well, it wasn't because of the perversion. No, listen to me. Listen to me. The pride, don't miss this, the pride led to all the perversion. Are you hearing me? You know what pride is? Here, here's pride. God, I know what you said. I know what your will is, but this is what I want. This is what my heart says. That's pride. Some of you in this room, you're going to hear all these verses and you're still going to leave here in the pride of your own wicked heart saying, yeah, but I know what I think. Yeah, okay, you're going to answer to God one day. Pride leads to perversion. Notice Ezekiel 16, verse 49. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom, the one that God sent forth as an example. Here it is. Pride, fullness of bread. You know, I wonder if, if God took away our food in America, if we'd still be having pride celebrations. Say, Pastor, you don't wish, hope you don't wish. I don't wish that on us. You know what I'm saying, though? God might do that to get our attention. Say, oh no, it's America. Oh, oh, do you think God has to have us? The world didn't function before America. I love my country, but I hate what it's becoming. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness, a bunch of laziness, was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. Selfish. Me, 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 I, I, I. And they were haughty. <laughs> okay, God, come on, God, if you, if you hate what we're doing, you haven't stopped us yet. That's exactly what America's doing. Marching up and down the streets, pride month. And committed abomination before me. What is that? Abomination literally is something that God detests. He hates, it makes him sick. Therefore, I took them away as I saw good. God's word is holy. Man's heart is extremely wicked. God's judgment against wicked perversion is severe. Man's pride against God is just like Satan's. You know, Satan got lifted up with pride. That's what got Satan kicked out. Pride. I'll be like the Most High. Oh, I know what God's word says, but... You know, this is what I think. And so, yeah, well, I think the Bible's a good book, but hey, this is what I think. So that's just as good as the Bible. Number five. 
Number five, man's destruction because of pride. I can't read every verse on this. I'll read a few. 1 Samuel 2, 3, Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to go into overtime here. I need to. The, the food, will. I promise you, we'll get to eat today. God's been so good to us. I've told you this story before, and I hate having to tell this story. I don't enjoy it at all, but somebody in here needs to wake up, and I don't know who it is. Somebody needs to. Seventeen years ago, I was teach preaching Sunday school. Say, what's that? It's teaching with a loud voice. <laughs> and a man in my class that I love, love his family. Look, I'm going to tell you, you, you can believe this. You can think I hate you. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't try to get your attention and tell you the truth. I was teach preaching about this subject. And the man had a son who was living in that perverse lifestyle. I got a call into the office that week. A letter had come. They said, we're done. We're not going to church there anymore. I went and visited them. I sat in the living room. The man was furious at me, angry. He said, I want to go to a church where my son can sit next to me and feel comfortable. I don't need to go to Sunday school and be preached at. By the way, we all need preaching. I need preaching. Teaching is good too, but all that does is inform. Preaching demands a decision. We need it both. I said, sir, I said, you're making a big mistake. I said, what your son needs is not a place he feels comfortable living in his sin. Your son needs a place that loves him enough to tell him the truth. I said, and sir, if you make the mistake of following your son out in the world, he may never come back to truth. He may never get right. You're making a big mistake. He said, I'm not coming back. It grieved me. But if I stopped and broke down every time I was grieved, I would never do anything for God. I just would have to stop and quit. But guess what? There's somebody else out there that wants the truth. That man did leave the church. His son did stay in that wicked, perverse lifestyle and died at a very young age in that wicked, perverse lifestyle. A man, one of my teachers in Bible college, I didn't even know this till a couple years ago, messed up in that perverse lifestyle, now has AIDS. By the way, you know, they used to call that the gay disease. It's not politically correct. It's true. Now, I know there were people early on that got things from blood transfusions. I'm going to tell you where most of it comes from now. Sexual perversion. Pride goeth before destruction. We're proud of our sin. It goeth before destruction. Pastor, I don't like you. Uh, you know what? Whether you do or not, it's not going to change the truth. <laughs> I don't like how loud you've been this morning. It's not going to change the truth. Pride goeth before destruction, and in a haughty spirit before a fall. The Lord said, I will punish the world for their evil. I will. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. We're proud. We're standing against you, God said. I'm going to cause that to cease. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. In Jeremiah 6.15, he said, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, no, they're proud of it. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. 
They weren't even embarrassed. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old past. Pastor, what you're preaching is old-fashioned. It's timeless. It's truth. Walk in the old paths. Come on. Get out of that sick with perversion. Walk in the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Malachi 4.1 For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. This is pride month. Man is going to be destroyed because of his pride. I want to end with this. Go to Romans 2, please. God is holy. His word is holy. He's not going to change his truth for anybody. Man's heart is naturally wicked. Born with sinful, wicked tendencies. We should not celebrate those tendencies. We should not be proud of those sinful, wicked tendencies. We should come to God for cleansing, for a change. God's judgment against wicked perversion is still true to this day. Man's pride against God is just like Satan's pride. And man will be destroyed if he continues in his pride. The good news is this. By the way, you might be here and you might be straight as an arrow. But there's still a wicked, sinful heart in your breast just like in mine. I don't stand here in a haughty way saying I'm better than anybody. I stand here telling you, though, there's a God in heaven who will not tolerate our pride. Who will not tolerate, tolerate us rubbing it in His face. Say, hey God, if you're really serious, how come you haven't judged us yet? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. This verse answers that. Why? How come if God set forth Sodom and Gomorrah as an example of destruction, how come he hasn't destroyed us yet? Come on, God, if you're really truly against this and you hate it. I'll tell you why. Because God's really good. He's merciful. He's long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why in Romans 2 it says in verse 3, Thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things? Well, that sin's wicked. What about the sin in your own heart? And doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? So, how come God hasn't judged yet? Because he's trying to lead you to repentance through his goodness. But if you continue in your hardened state of pride, your hardened mind, notice verse 5, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render to every man according to his deeds. The good news is this. God offers you salvation. John 3. I want to look at two more verses. We'll be done. Look at John 3. We know these verses. Sin is abominable. It's wicked before God. Let's not play with it. Let's not think it's okay. Let's not be proud of it. This is why Jesus had to come and die. Because sin is that bad. And that's why God, the Bible says, so loved the world. That He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, 
but we'll be done here. Look at 1 Corinthians 6. We're studying 1 Corinthians on Wednesday night. And Corinth was a wicked town, very wicked. But there were people saved out of that wickedness. And I want you to see 1 Corinthians 6, 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Say, that's a bad, bad group, Pastor. Guess what? Every person in the world fits somewhere in there. You look at Revelation 21, 8, those who deserve the second death, we all fit somewhere in there. Look at verse 11, and such were some of you. But ye are washed. What do you mean we're washed? We're made clean. How? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. But ye are sanctified. How am I sanctified? Because I'm in Jesus. I'm not righteous because my heart is righteous. My heart's deceitful and wicked just like yours is. You know what I need? I, I need Jesus' righteousness. So when I looked as a lost sinner headed for hell to Jesus, who died on that cross in my place, who suffered for my sins, he was buried, he rose again. When I looked to him and I trusted him for my salvation, all my wickedness was put on him on the cross and all his righteousness was given to me freely. Notice verse 11, it says, but ye are justified. What does that mean? It means I'm just in the eyes of God. I'm just as if I were never even a sinner. Why? Because Jesus shed his blood for me. Such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I told you I, I don't like having to preach on this topic, but it's necessary. You're not going to hear the truth anywhere but from God's Word. We're surrounded by proud perversion. Folks, get it settled in your mind, the truth. The truth. God's Word is holy. God will not tolerate sin. You say, uh, we, we need to be tolerant. No, 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 no. God doesn't tolerate sin. Psalm 40, verse 4. By the way, Christians, people tell you, hey, you, you need to respect everybody's point of view. No, Psalm 40, verse 4 tells you not to respect any point of view that doesn't line up with God's Word. Let me say that again. God's Word teaches us not to respect any point of view that does not line up with God's Word. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. It's a lie to say men and women are the same. It's a lie to say somebody who was born a man should be a woman, somebody who's born a woman should be a man. It's a lie. It's a lie to say that this, this lifestyle is acceptable. It's a lie. Christian, you don't have to respect that viewpoint. You can be kind and loving to a person, but you do not need to respect a perverse viewpoint that does not agree with God's Word. I'll tell you the viewpoint I respect. I respect God's viewpoint. God's Word is holy. He, he will not tolerate sin. Man's heart is naturally wicked. God's judgment against wicked perversion is severe. Men's pride against God is like Satan's. And man will be destroyed if he continues in his pride, but God offers you salvation today. He offers you salvation. He shed his blood on an old rugged cross. He loves you enough to suffer for your sins. And he wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. He wants to make you his child. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Who would say, Pastor, I'm, I know I'm not saved. I know I'm not, and I need to be saved. I need Jesus as my Savior. If that's you, would you lift your hand? I need to be saved. Would you lift your hand? I'm not saved, and I need to be. Heads are still bowed, eyes are still closed. Who would say, Pastor, I am saved? 
I'm not a perfect person, but I have a perfect Savior. He's paid the price for my sins, and I've trusted Him, and I know I'm forgiven. I know I'm a child of God. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Would you give Him thanks for saving you? You know, it took as much of the blood of Jesus to save you as it did any sinner. It took as much of the blood of Jesus to save me as it did any sinner. Our heads are still bowed. Our eyes are still closed. Christians, Christians, do not accept this is normal. This pride month, this perversion in our culture, don't accept it as okay. Don't tolerate that wicked point of view. Stand up for truth. Be a light in the darkness. Don't hide in the corner. Look, if you don't speak the truth from God's word, how are the people around you ever going to know the truth? Some of you have family members. You've, you've been struggling with this. You have some in your family living in this lifestyle. Listen, love them, but do not. Do not help them continue in that perverse lifestyle. Don't encourage it. And, and don't, not even that, don't stay neutral. Be honest about it. Be truthful about it. If you had a, if you had a, a, a son or a daughter who is a drug addict, would you say, well, they were just born with those tendencies? No. You would love them, but you'd do whatever you could to take a stand. to deliver them out of that perversion. Can I, can I tell you something? Listen, our young people are under attack. I mean, I'm talking about from the youngest ages in the public school system, they're being indoctrinated with propaganda telling them that this is normal. They need someone to take a stand and tell them the truth. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. My head is bowed. My eyes are closed. Who would say, dear Lord, I'm not going to be ashamed of the truth. I'm not going to be ashamed of your word. I'm not going to be intimidated into hiding in a corner. I'm going to stand for truth. Because I love people, I'm going to stand for truth. If that's you, would you lift your hand to the Lord? Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, our country is broken. Lord, but uh, you didn't say... You didn't say if those people got right, you'd heal our land. You said if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. Lord, help us to understand that revival starts with us. Do a work in our hearts this morning, I pray. Let's stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed.